Do it. All right, we're back. So uh, if you didn't join us last time, uh, they, they had a wonderful ceremony for, uh, for Connor, uh, who unfortunately passed away at the very beginning of the last session. And they made it to the Konishma, the Nonish Copper Mines. Uh, they made it to the Copper, the copper Mines and found uh, at least no miners as of yet. Uh, they made it in, um, they made it into, and they explored the first level and found a lift going down and stairs. Uh, the, they managed to avoid the collapsing stairs that looked like they had been trapped. However, while trying to cross that distance, Tubbs got severely hurt. So Ari, Kara, and their new companion, Horst, the halfling, decided to take the lift down and explore what they could while Falon and Tubbs rest uh, on the upper level. Uh, that way they can both operate the... Uh, the wench and get the uh, the lift up and down. However, while exploring the bottom of the cave, they ran into and were ambushed by several goblins, four to be exact. Uh, the fight has gone all right. Uh, Horst and Kara have taken a little bit of damage, uh, and they have threshold pained one of the goblins. And that's where we're at right now. We're currently in second 33 of combat. On second 34. If you remember before, this this goblin here was the goblin that had originally charged in and you would you would hurt him um, a little bit. Uh, this is the goblin that is threshold of pain. Horse just hurt this goblin a little bit. You nicked him once, but uh, when, on your critical hit, that did. There we go. So I didn't see anything you were pointing out, but uh... yep. Sorry, I shifted you here. This is the goblin you've hurt pretty okay. pretty consistently. Yeah. This is the goblin that is threshold of pain. This is the goblin fighting horse who's a little bit hurt, and this goblin looks unhurt. This is the goblin that's been just attacking you. Well, yeah. this goblin here is it fighting Ari. Okay, so um, I ideally want to take a. I just want to check if I can do all of this. Um, yeah. We need to use the time now because I was like readying my uh, uh, sword. Um, hit the guy who was hurt. And then my plan is not to take another swing, but to try to step over. How do I make a thing? I don't know. How do, how do you make the. Uh, huh? click, and, click and hold to make a, okay. to make a ping. Cool. I want to step over here and uh, um, coup de grace the guy who's down. So that only okay, takes a so, couple seconds, right? Yeah. So this second you're going to attack, then you're not going to start another weapon speed. You're going to, on the next second, move and then start yeah. a coup de grace. Yeah, yeah that, that's totally cool. fine. Perfect. Yeah. I can hit. So, yeah, and you you did hit his shield, though. Small shield in one hand, and because you missed by eight, you catch his shield. Um, what does that mean? I'm so confused about shields. Shield gives him a defense of four, and the penalty for not using a shield is minus four. So it, with a small shield, if you miss by eight within eight, then you've hit a shield because it's it's him using his shield to block the attack uh, within that threshold. Do I do anything for that, though? Or Yeah, so you'll, you'll roll your... Under your weapon, you've got two different uh, damages. You've got base damage and you've got shield damage, right? Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. So on your damage rolls, you'll roll shield damage instead of damage. Yeah. And so it, it reduces your the dice you roll by one essentially or half, and so you 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 swing at him with your scimitar, and the goblin manages to get his shield just in time, and it smashes on the shield, um, 
if you do enough damage, there's a, there's a chance it can still hurt him um, by going through his DR of his shield and his armor. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do enough damage, there's also a chance that you just destroy his shield. Okay. But yeah, in this case, you've sma you've you've tried to attack, but it I mean, wasn't quite enough, and you deflect off his shield. Five. You can. It's your turn. Yeah, I'll just step over here. All right. So you take a step over. On second 35, as you're stepping away from this goblin right here, this goblin is actually, it kind of looks around. It, it yells something to these other goblins, and this goblin jogs away from you. Like he uses your chance to like he uses you stepping away. Like it's almost it's almost kind of funny because you're stepping away and at the same time this goblin steps away. <laughs> um maybe that's why he doesn't like follow you or take a swing or anything like that. And Ari, this goblin also turns to try to flee away from you. So there's there's several things you can do. If you're closer to your weapon speed than not, because at this point the goblin turned and like went to run. So he's showing you his back. So if you're a thief, you can take a free attack if you have the, I think it's rearward strike. I think that's the ability that you have um, that allows you to take a free attack if they run. At the same time, if, you don't, if you're not a thief, you only get a free attack if you're closer to attacking than not attacking. So I believe, what is your weapon speed? I believe that I'm only two away from my initial, uh, the attack the last I made. Because my weapon speed is oh, seven, yeah, and we're like on that. second yep. thirty-five, which means we're only two away uh, yep. from my last attack. So, if you were three seconds away from attacking, you could get a free attack. Um, alternatively, you could also just try to follow him. So, it's it's whatever you'd like to do. You can react to. He's he's basically turned to run. What would you like to do? I'm moving. There you go. So, and then Kara hit. Uh, you're going to start a coup de gras. How long does it take you to coup de gras? Oh, there you got your delay. On second 35, the goblin fighting Horst is still in this uh, this one-to-one -one fight. Um, so he's going to swing at you, Horst. And I'm going to block with my dagger. Oh, yeah, you're defending with your dagger? Or are uh -huh. you going to try to do a parry? Uh, no, I think I'll defend. Okay. Thirteen. Yep. So you you easily either knock it aside or dodge, um, and that goblin misses. Next up is going to be second. On second thirty six, these goblins here. I'll I'll kick them out of their weapon speeds. These goblins are are still fleeing. So this goblin is, is trying to flee again, and it is as well. They're, they're both kicking up into a, a jog, so they get uh, one and a half squares. Would you like to still follow, Ari? Uh, yeah. Thirty-seven. This goblin is is moving up into a to a run, uh, trying to get, trying to get away. And this goblin is doing the same, trying to run away from you, moving a full two squares. At this point, would not be able to attack him. I'm sorry. Did you say something? Yeah. Sorry, can you extend the sentence because I'm getting that thing? Yes, you can attack the goblin. Okay, sorry, when it's <laughs> like a single syllable and it's breaking up on the first syllable, all I'm hearing is... <laughs> if I purposely garble the, uh, the word, does it ungarble? No, it's not a code phrase. Damn! All right, so it uh, it's running away, so it gets a lower defensive dice.
just barely manages to i mean you you stop and swing and the goblin is like maybe he's kind of like like leaning forward as he's trying to run and he just barely manages to duck under your attack as you swing over him due to that swing on this second you're not gonna be able to follow all right we'll just assume that, I did that on 38 that. then so on so now this is this is 37 this is their moves on 37 Right, but they just moved, so it's just going to go to yeah, 38. Yeah. yeah, so on 38, you, you follow move. to there. Yeah. Yep. And they, this one runs one, two, one, two. Running, ah! And, because that's their, that's their max speed right there. And Kara, you've killed this goblin. He was screaming in pain, and you slit his throat. How how do you want to do it? Oh, I slit his throat. That's good. You slit his throat. Perfect. Efficient. Are you, do you do you use it with your do you do it with your dagger or your scimitar? Uh, I guess I have both out. Um, and and do it with the scimitar. All right, so you like, like, yank his head up, and he like, ah, like screams at you, and you off him. Yeah. So then, just hit done for one second. Second thirty nine. What do you want to do? Yeah. Hmm. Um. I guess I'm looking around. I'm realizing how far the um, goblins are. My instinct would be go to, uh, help Ari. Um. Because we just met this horse guy, okay. um, but horse has a light. <laughs> and so I dropped it. Off. Oh, you dropped it. It's over. I, dro I dropped it right there. Yeah, so right where I'm at, I dropped it. So it's by me, but I don't actually have it. Yeah, I think Still I'm gonna have go. The light, kind of. Yeah. I, I think that I'll move towards you and try to help you dispatch your goblin, so we can take the light and go help Ari, both of us. Okay. Here are are shuffling away into the darkness still, as far away as they can. And it's horsed. Your dagger's okay. up. Yeah, dagger out. I want to stab him. All right, do what you can. And that's probably not going to happen. I hit the defense. Oh, there we go. Uh, Sixteen. Um, and. You didn't hit, or you didn't miss by eight, and so uh, you you just whiff. And now uh, you gonna oh, keep oh, fighting him? Yeah. Um, well, awesome. yeah. So just delay my. Yeah, delay your seven seconds for your dagger. Yeah. All right. And I I put you on thirty nine, uh, but you already moved on thirty nine, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe so. My normal one was 40, wasn't it? One was 40. Can I move as I'm hitting him, or do I have to stay in the same? So you can do a, a it's called a tactical move, in which you can move one square. at a, Well, it's, well, it's move at a walking speed. So the disadvantage is that you're a little bit shorter than... Um, than other folks. So for you to move one square, it would take two seconds. So it would take two tactical moves, which would okay. mean you'd have a minus two to attack and defense until your next attack. Just check it. So, yeah, but you, you can do. You can always do that. Um, okay. There is a there is a cleric. Uh, I think it's a cleric of like tactics and war. And their whole stick is that they like the higher the higher level they get, they get free tactical moves. Um, that's that's one of their benefits. Is they're they're like a master of tactics, and so they're able to shift around without suffering penalties. That's cool. Uh, do you want to hit done, Ari, so we can advance the time? Oh, well, I thought because you moved me to thirty nine for some reason that okay. And now for lag. There we go. Forty, so you can move again. 
Alright, so I can't see them because they're past the darkness. Can I make a move into the darkness and make an attack and just guess if I get to them? Into this direction. Um, so right. if you're in the I mean, darkness... Can I make a random yeah. move in a direction and then since you can see everything, can you just... I'll make a swing. You pretend if there's a defender there. And if I'm anywhere near them, I'm swinging yeah. randomly. So mechanically, the way it works is you can you can move and attack. Um, however, you have a penalty of... I'm just double checking. It is minus... Unless you have... You don't have blind fighting, do you? No. Eight to attack and minus four to defense. So... Um, I'm sorry, what was the uh, modifier? Yeah, that's it. You have a minus eight to attack and a minus four to defense. And in dim light, which I believe you are in currently, there's a minus four to attack and minus two to defense. Right. Okay, so maybe not yeah. so much that. Do it, but you, I mean, they are against lower defense because they are. Uh, they are running away from you. Right, However, but I'll effectively it, it, you know, be in yeah. their their territory at that point, fighting them in the dark. True. So yeah, no, I'm that just is very around. true. Okay, I'm running back up here. And here, scam continue. You can hear them scampering off uh, away from you. Kara. Cool. Um, I moved one square last time. Can I pick up speed and move two stuff? Uh, you could have automatically start in a. You can always start in a jog, which means oh. you could have moved two squares last time. Okay. Well, I'll if you want to do that now, if you want to do that now and take that extra square, I don't mind. Okay. Cool. Uh, that gets and then so, yeah. Um, so yeah, can you I... can you can always start in a jog once you're disengaged. Gotcha. Can I hit this turn, or I have to wait a second? Yes, you can. You you okay. you get up into weapon weapon range and you swing away. So once again, within eight, though. So he he tries to parry you with his short uh, his small shield, and you smack it. Getting really unlucky on those those uh, those shield hits there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And that is your turn. Oh, remember you also damaged your scimitar in the in this fight. So that's they also got that uh, penalty. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. I just keep and, swinging at this guy because I don't know that Ari is coming back yet. So I might be. I think I'm just gonna hit done and see what I do. Okay. So on neck second forty one. Always the first syllable that is garbling when I when I start speaking. Theta. Sorry, say again. Is it is it always the first syllable that garbles? It seems to be. Should I start saying things with like a like a like a like a Roger Roger, and then start uh, start all the sentences that way? I get that one syllable, and it's always the same word. Or you could just be very indecisive. Start with an um. <laughs> all right, um, Kara, what are you going to do? Um, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna tell uh, um. <laughs> The halfling to get ready to pick up the torch and run to help Ari. I, I guess okay. that takes. I'm gonna assume that takes a second. Um, Potato, then, you can always say anything you want, uh, like while you're while you're doing other actions. You could be fighting and also tell him that. Okay, I'm gonna delay then to take another hit at the goblin. Potato, perfect. These goblins are running, uh, running away, and effectively they're out of combat. So. Um, I'm going to delay them by a lot of time. Potato, next up is Ari. All right, I've run. Done. To you, Ari. Sorry. 
slowing down. Ah, oh, that moment when you don't know if you've hit done or you misclicked. There we go. Goblins are a little bit, uh, goblins are more of skitty, skittish creatures. So now that there's been, there's three people fighting it, uh, which one of you is the, has the highest morale modifier? I imagine I do. Oh, because have you have a morale four. morale modifier of four, yeah. Because I just imagine I have the highest charisma. And since you enter combat, I want you to roll a d20 and add four. Awesome. So this creature got a seven. So essentially, as you as you enter combat, this creature is already a little bit nervous with with Kara entering the fray against against it when it was fighting horse. And now that you've entered on second forty two, this goblin turns tail and tries to run away from from both horse and uh, fr and from Kara. I believe the both of you do have backstab abilities. You're a rogue, as as a horse, you're a rogue, and carry you're a thief. Would you guys both like to take that backstab opportunity, or would you like to try to follow the goblin? Have him. Go go right ahead. So that's the attack, it's a, right? It's it's a it's a rearward strike, I believe. Sorry, not not backstab. So the the ability oh. here is, which I think with I think you still have. Um, oh, okay. I wasn't sure. I know I have the backstab, but I I didn't. I didn't read anything about the rear word. But I defer to you, so. Is it fleeing opponent? Yes, this yeah, this is a fleeing opponent. Uh that that this is a yeah, fleeing opponent. So should an opponent attempt to flee from melee with a thief, the thief can strike as if dealing a backstab. So yes, this is a, a backstab ability. There so you can so you could you have two options. You could you you don't have enough time to swing with your scimitar because you uh, you're not halfway through your weapon speed. So at this at this point, the only attack you have is that backstab with your dagger in your offhand. I'm double checking to see if Connor you to see if Horst has this ability as a rogue. I, I think, think he does because he has I think so. I think because it's fleeing opponent, I think I can do it with um, with uh, a scimitar as well. So this is the only situation where a thief can use a weapon other than a dagger or knife to perform backs. Oh yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I should have kept reading the next sentence. Uh, it, it in the very beginning of the rogue, it says that. Uh, like thieves, rogues gain improved initiative dice, can backstab and strike a fleeing opponent as if with a backstab. So, attack away, the both of you. Do I just hit the regular attack? Sorry, I'm not sure if I should modify anything. Yes, you, you make a regular attack. Uh, the only modification we're going to make is there's a little bit of a modification due to the damage, and I'll tell you that modification when if if you hit, which is most likely. The first defense roll against it looks like a horse with a 16. This gets a 10, so horse, you're going to hit. Do you have a backstab all all set up already? Yes. So roll their backstab damage. And then, Kara, you can also roll your backstab damage. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, that... Um, it doesn't look like you have it set up completely right. Okay. Dennis, on your... Let me, let me modify that. Uh... To one d four, right, with a minus one. Yeah. So that's that's not necessary. So I've got it set up now. On so roll roll again. No worries. So essentially, the 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 roll twenty mechanic is that you roll. Uh, is you this would be for a scimitar, and this would be for a dagger. Uh, and so what that what that means is, oh, sorry, it should be two d eight exclamation p greater than 
and seven. So what, what that mechanically mechanically what that means is you penetrate just like normal for Hackmaster, except that that greater less or greater than sign, uh, that greater than less than sign. That means it penetrates on greater than seven as opposed to just on the max roll. Uh, so if you want to create a weapon stat that has that. Uh, you're more than more than welcome to. Uh, it should be automatically inputted on yours. Uh, there, Horst, I, I fixed it for you. Uh, so with your with your damage that you rolled, Carrie, it looks like you rolled two max eights, and there wasn't any sevens rolled. So, but you still did 15 points of damage. Uh, this also counts as a rearward strike since you're slashing him in the rear. So, Kara, you will ignore his damage reduction, or at least one point of damage reduction. And with that amount of damage is uh he's actually threshold of pain so he he like sees uh ari coming and goes ah it turns to run and you slash him in the back with your scimitar and he like makes it maybe makes it a step or two and then collapses in pain uh and he's he's screeching ah, ah, and like 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 trying to crawl away um as like slow very slowly uh and crying out in pain what would you guys like to do? Essentially, we're out of combat at this point. You can like those goblins have gotten away, and this goblin is threshold of pain for um, fifteen seconds. So, what would you all like to do? Um, essentially, you all have reset your counts. Let's see. Uh, don't kill him. Thalon can translate and talk to him. You have about fifteen seconds to. Uh, do what you like with him. Um, what what would you like to do? Oh, actually, I might have a... <laughs> um, I'm going to pull out um, the rope I have and uh, and start trying to tie him up. All right, so you've got, uh, you've got 15 seconds here. So we will... 57. 15 seconds here. So a D, D4 penetrating to pull out your rope. Uh, Horst and Ari, what are you doing at the same time? Whatever I need to do to help uh, Kara. Fair enough. Let's. I I'm gonna go see what's behind those curtains over there. There's there's some light shining in. I want to I want to go over there. Going to take your uh, your torch with you. Sure. I'll pick it. Did you okay. pick it up, Kara, or? No. It's still on your ground. It's still on the ground at your feet. Yeah, I want to. I want to pick it up and uh, motor on over, um, over here. All right, you can start moving over there. Where, so, right? Yeah, I mean, a sense, or other direction. Yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> yeah, the 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 curtains over here. So. Yeah. Kara, roll a use rope check to try a knot. It's an average check to to tie up this uh, this kobold or goblin. Five and you got a sixty three. So you maybe it's be because he's resisting a little bit and like kind of thrashing around and still trying to get away that uh, he can't quite you can't quite tie it. Uh, roll a d six for how long it's going to take. Uh, so that's a that penetrates. So roll another d6. It's seven seconds. So you've used about nine seconds left. So you got about another five seconds left until he's unthresholded pained. So make another f you, rope use check. I'm also going to ask Ari, like, can you help me? Oh, yeah, because I was so successful last time. And roll a d6 penetrating for uh, how long that takes to to time up this second time. Maybe it is with Ari's help that you finally succeed. Uh, yeah, it looks like he also succeeded in average check. So Ari, you and Kara are both there, and you managed to tie up that goblin um, secure. So that's what's happened there. Horst, you move into this room over here and start looking around as you as you break through the curtain. 
you see, uh, so in the very center of the room uh, sits a table with several barrels set around it with chairs. Uh, a single lantern sits just off, uh, just off to the side of the table. Um, and it looks like these goblins were involved in in some sort of game because uh, you see the there's a dagger stuck into the uh, uh, the top of the table, and there, there's there's small splotches of blood, and it looks like several uh, like cut marks with the dagger into the table itself. Pulls back to the guys. Hey guys, there's there's a bunch of stuff in here. Come on. And then I want to go more into the room. Okay. Move on in. Check out one of the barrels. Yeah. Damn thing. Go back. Uh, leave the light, you idiot. Tell Ari, like, I'm gonna kill this fucking halfway. <laughs> <laughs> So Horst, you're you're starting to investigate inside this this room. Um, are you trying to look inside the barrels? Yeah, I definitely want to look inside the barrels. I want to know what's. Inside. I want to grab the dagger and uh, put it put it on, on my back. You know, like shove it in my waist. Okay, nice. So yeah, you get one dagger. Um, it it appears to be uh, of of decent enough quality to use. Uh, looking in, like maybe you use that same dagger to try to crack open one of the uh, the the barrels, um, you notice that the barrels are a little bit, they're, they're fairly light with just a little bit of weight at the bottom. And as you crack open the first one, you see uh, it's filled with just a little bit of like, looks like scrap rocks to make it just heavy enough that it doesn't like wobble um, and move around. So it looks like you could, you could move it around a little bit uh, with, with some ease, but it's got just enough weight uh, to kind of keep it steady. Is there just one barrel? There's four, so there's four different chairs. Um, and as you start searching through all four of them, you notice that all four of them are are the same, each filled with just a little bit of rocks. The rocks look like the same that the same sort of rocks that were filling these giant piles of rocks out in this main cavern. What's on the table? The only thing on the table was the dagger stuck into it and a lantern. Okay. Um, I want to grab the lantern and just uh, right. kind of... But, um, well, I don't need to grab the lantern. I'll I'll just wave my torch around and and see what I can see in the room, like on the walls. Is there any other passageways? You do see this another passageway on the far side of the uh, on the far side of the room. On um, in the room itself, it, it appears to be a natural cavern with uh, like a, a little bit of moisture and condensation there's there's like light rocks and pebbles kind of littering the ground um but aside from that it doesn't look like there's carvings in the wall um or graffiti or anything like that i'm gonna go back to the curtain and okay. with um a little bit more annoyance hey come on let's go are you guys coming or what we can't see in the dark Well, here's the light. Come on. Please don't leave us for an ambush again. I want to check this room out. And then once we check this room out, we can take that goblin up to that, that elf dude. My back hurts. I roll my eyes <laughs> and, uh, and look at Ari and be like, it's up to you. I mean, hold on a sec. Um, are you? What are you doing with that goblin over there? Out of character question. I for. Uh, can you repeat your question? Yeah. What are you doing? What are you? What goblin? are you doing with the goblin? I, I want to have him tied up so we can take him up to the lawn to, you know, question him. Right. But the have you? Have you actively tied him up already, or are you still working on that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, you, he's you just finished up. tying him up. You just finished tying him up, and he's like kind of resisting a little bit. Uh, he he's very hurt. All right, then I guess yeah, just drag him along, and we'll follow Horst because he's got us by the short hairs. Do you have any torches, Ari? Because <laughs> we could just light another. Right, but I can't hold the shield and the sword without you know. 
Remember the, remember the joke from before? I'm going to put a, a holder on the front of my shield to carry a yep. torch. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be guarded now than caught on unawares later. So I guess follow ask, Horst. Ask Horst, is there, um, are there other passageways through that area? Well, I, I saw something in, in the back, but... Uh... Um, I don't know, and I, I don't know if we, we really want to go down that path yet. I mean, I do, but, you know, maybe, I don't know. What, what do we want to do with the goblin? Why'd you tie him up? We should have just killed him. Who cares about him? He tried to kill us. More about what's down here. Well, there, the room, it looks like they're playing a game. There's four barrels, a table, um, and uh, I pull out the dagger, and I'm like, I found this sweet dagger. Um, and I'm going to keep it because I found it. So it's mine. Um, and, um, but I don't know. I, I think there's got to be more stuff. In, I got a good feeling like there is more stuff in here that we got to find. Um, but those goblins, I don't think they're coming back because they got scared from, from, um, from Ari. I, you know, so, uh, I think he scared them all away. So, uh, I think, I think we're good. I mean, I, we can just go in here and check it out just a little bit further if you guys want. And, and, uh, then, um, uh, I don't know. Why, whatever you guys want to do with the goblin, I guess. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I'm getting antsy just like standing here. I mean, we got to do something. What do you think? I walk back in. You walk back into the the room you were in before, or the main room? Yeah. Um, no, into the room, into that little curtained room. So I said what I was going to say, yeah. and now I'm, I'm like uh, just walking in. I I, I want to see what this area is about. Okay. Hey, I don't know if you heard me, Karen's asking what what Ari thinks we should do. Oh, I already said he's got us by the short hairs. He's holding the torch. We can't see in the dark. By the All right, necessity. Can you help me drag the oh, wow, I thought you had that. Okay, hold on. Let me go back into the darkness to be ambushed by goblins. I might be able to. I'm not super strong. I'm not sure how. I've how thrown I'm... out my back. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're strong enough to, to pull this goblin around. Well, I think okay, me cool. and uh, Kara are of equal strength here. I just have the additional, I've thrown out my back. Outside of combat, it's okay. You you can just drag this goblin with you. Right, because you also have to remember there's a couple of goblins lurking around in the darkness. That it's making we, a, a, a holler. That so as, as you guys are dragging, see. he's like... Rah, 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 rah. He's like screeching and hollering. All right, do I see making a ruckus. Else? Uh, aside from this this tunnel on the far side leading leading out, you do not see anything else. Anything left of the rope? Can I can I gag the guy? Okay, is that another rope piece? Uh, it's it's fine. It's you don't need a rope piece for that. Okay. Uh, looks like there's some more stuff back here. Ah, oh, we got to come back. We gotta come back. What, what what are we doing with that goblin? Do you know how many goblins are down here and where their where their secret base is? Anything like that? Because he well, does. Right. I mean, there's probably just four. I mean, we saw four. I mean, how many more? How many could there possibly be? I mean, they're goblins. There could possibly be more than four. Ah. But uh, okay, we'll we'll take them back to the. We'll take it back to the elf, I guess, because oh, this looks great. We got to get in here. Um, I just wanted to see what else was in here. Um, I guess we can head back. Do you guys want to go further? I mean, we can we can just drag the goblin and drag him through. I mean, look, you guys rather do that or? I'm going to take him back. So if I need. You know, if you and Ari want to go on, Ari, just give me a torch, and uh, I'll light it. I'll drag this guy back up. You guys can go ahead. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. We, we, we don't want to split everything up. I mean, split everybody up. I mean, um, I just met you guys. I mean, I, I want to stick together. I mean, you know, plus I still got to get paid for my deal from that elf up there. So, um, okay, let's let's all head back. I can't drag the goblin, though. He's he's too heavy for me. Yeah, it's okay. I got the goblin. Let's let's go back up the lift. Okay. Um. Well, uh, you lead the way, Kara, and I'll follow you. I think you have to lead the way because you're holding the torch. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> stick close, buddy. You got the light. She can walk to the edge, and then I can. Yeah, move move along. Move as move as you want to move. Yeah, I'm still I'm still uh hauling along the goblin. I just can't move this little yeah. thing. Yeah. And this is the winch and the uh, lift. It just appears to have crashed because it hasn't become the future yet. True. Crashed. <laughs> so, uh, you guys, how are you going to signal Thalon that he should lift you up? I fire a flare. Thalon! Right We're ready! I call him on the Yo, phone. Yo, close up! <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're got, you guys are just going to yell? A listening check, Thalon. Okay. Uh, they are straight down in an echoing cavern. Uh, let me just take a bit to scroll. So it shouldn't be too hard to hear them. I mean, literally, wasn't your whole idea that you were going to be up there so that you could see us? Yeah, actually, yeah. So yeah, you uh, it's it, you hear the echoing like you've seen that torch light move around. You see it disappear for a little bit, mm -hmm. where there's just a little bit of light and then reappear. And you hear some some voice like loud voices <clears throat> echoing up, calling your name. All right, uh, I want to take that as the signal. That seems like a reasonable uh, way to go here. Maybe that's uh, what they're so, yelling. Signal. <laughs> so Thalon is still tied to uh, the structure around the wench, and we'll go ahead and start the wench back up. It's been like less than a minute, so Thalon hasn't even gone anywhere. He just waves tubs back over if he decided to wander off. So, uh, we'll we'll hoist them up. All right. Easy so it's, it you it. you start the the slow grinding of the the winch, and it. It the, the slowly the lift starts rising up into the air, um, and after thirty five seconds, half another minute, half mm -hmm. you, they're up there with a lovely little friend, a little green friend who's got several stab wounds and bleeding from normal norm several cuts. You see as well that I think Kara and Horst look slightly injured as well. Looks like they got in some sort of tussle. Come well, I here, suppose this answers one question. Uh, Thalon will go ahead and, like, slowly try to, like, untie himself from the, uh, structure, and then go back to the safety of the cliff. <clears throat> uh, uh, away from the cliff. Going the wrong way. And he will flop face first next to the campfire. Um, party members are slightly injured. What happened? You should have seen it. There were like 14 goblins down there that we took care of. And, you know, uh, I don't know what the other guys were doing. It, it seemed like it was just like all me fighting. But, uh, yeah, I got I got, I got, got this little stab wound on the side here. Uh, and uh, I sit down next to him and uh, grab my wineskin and, and take a drink. Ah, uh, Dennis always right. wants to get drunk. Uh, Tubbs, where are you? I don't see your character. Oh, he was... Looks like he was out by the other fire. Oh, he's outside. Okay. Now, now, you're, now you're all here. 
Okay, I'm gonna drag the goblin over to the lawn and be like, can you how many there are? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'll go ahead and try Dwarvish first and see if he actually responds to it. Can you hear me? What is your name? Can you speak? Gobbledygook! All right, that's question number one done. So let's go ahead and go to question number two, which is going to be... How much do I need to spend for translate? What's the best amount? <clears throat> Typical duration, five minutes. I could spend 10 more SP to make it uh, last for more minutes, or I could just cast it a second time. Uh, extend comprehension. I need that. So it's going to be 50 points for five minutes, and if we need five minutes more, I could go ahead and spend another 50. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking for uh, my points. Okay, so I'm basically full. I haven't been using anything else. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, spend 50 points. So I am now at 140. Uh, and I can now translate him, as well as I can normally speak my uh, basic language, which is 77. Good, what? speak. What? Oh, you speak goblin? I do now. How many of you are there? Ah, come the curse on your name. How many of you Yo. are there? The launch shouts even louder than just slaps him. <laughs> Would you like to try to do a interrogation check or a torture check to try to get information out of him? I think I'm going to take the one that has the largest penalty, which is torture, <laughs> because I have a minus 20 penalty to it or something. <laughs> Uh, but this is probably interrogation. I'm taking a look and see. But, like, how either bad either I am one on works. Um, a torture a torture will hurt him, um, while interrogation is more like psychological things. Yeah, uh, minus twenty percent to. Oh, I have minus twenty to interrogation. There we go. But I can do the torture then. So let's do the torture. Oh, right. I just immediately what take down my skill? staff and I start whacking him. A uh, seventeen. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll your torture check. Blonde this is an opposed goes... roll. Uh, this is Blonde. an opposed roll, and it's a secret roll. So I roll the no. resist persuasion, and uh, you. So you don't know if the information you're getting is correct or completely false, and of and course, of course. But but the time I need to roll high, I roll incredibly low. Unfortunate. Yeah, Blonde's method is not great. <laughs> yes, you brought back a mega sturge. Very good job, everybody. <laughs> yeah, what is your uh what is your monster lore, by the way? Uh monster lore is 30. You do recognize the creature they've brought back as not a sturge, although maybe a distant cousin. You'd have to do more research. It's uh this possible. is a uh it is actually a goblin. Um and you you know that these creatures are uh, rather insidious creatures. Uh, they are typically more nocturnal. However, living in a mine, there's not really night, so that uh, that doesn't really give you a lot of help there. Um, mm -hmm. They do like to build lots of traps, and they are while they're they're kind of they're a little bit cowardly. They are uh, rather they're like crudely cunning. Um, mm -hmm. you do know that they have pretty good listening and they're, they're, they're rather keen of eyesight and hearing and, um, they're, they're, I mean, because they're nocturnal, they have a pretty good eyesight in the dark. Okay. Uh, do I know anything about like, uh, typical sizes they go around in? I guess like large tribes, small tribes, family groups. You do know that they can be in all of those groups. Like they, I mean, they, the group that you find can vary in size depending on where they found, and they usually get bigger once they found, you know, sizable like layers to to grow out of. Um, all right. So ultimately, uh, no real way to pin it down. Got it. No, no real way to pin it down unless you saw the entire goblin tribe, um, or yeah. maybe saw where they were sleeping or something like that. 
So your interrogation result, um, so or your torture, me. your torture result. So yes, torture, you do interrogation. Damage to him as you bludgeon him. Well, I shoot you the start, person, and then I just kill him. Oh gosh! <laughs> yeah, so you start you start torturing him. You you start you 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 touch him and you cast your spell and start translating. Um, are you are you just beating him with your staff? Is that your is that your torture method? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go straight into beating him. <laughs> so you guys all, uh, Kara, you say Thalon, can you interrogate this goblin? So you drag him over to Thalon, and you see Thalon say something in Dorvish, which I think. Which probably only Tubbs understands, and then Thalon reaches out and and touches him. You see him utter some words, and then he he starts speaking in uh, to what you guys sound is what sounds like to you unintelligible, the same sort of speech that the goblin had been doing. And the goblin like spits something back, and Thalon pulls out his quarterstaff and just starts smacking him. Like you'll smack him, and then like shout something in his face, and keeps on smacking him. Um, this this repeats for uh for a, for a short amount of time. Yeah, can we intervene? Are we able I mean, to interrupt? Is, you you could try to interrupt. Yeah, I mean, get him out. It looks it looks like he's torturing him. That's that's what it looks like. Yeah, I want to grab his staff and just be like, look, he's he's about to die anyway. Let's ask him. Just ask him if he wants to live or not. Well, his last words can be the answer to my question. Um, I want to instead. I want to grab the guy um, and uh, by the hair and pull out my dagger. And I just want to be like Thalon, translate this. If you don't tell us what you know, what we want to know, I will slit your throat like I did your friend. All right, I'll, I'll translate that. Okay. That is probably going to be interrogation then. Yep, so roll an interrogation check, uh, Thalon, as you're the one translating. I was hoping, like, the physical body language here would probably be more prevalent. And it, it, does give you, it does yeah. give you a bonus. Uh, let's see, I am still at minus 10 for it, I think it said. So I have an 8 default, so I'm at minus 2. Uh, I'm just going to roll the d100, and we can uh, add or subtract from there, if that's okay. Sounds good. 26 minus 2 would be 24, and then however much bonus you want to apply to that. So he's, the, the bonus is is you, he saw you killing his friends, and uh, you've threatened him with death. And you... Uh, he, he, what, are you what are you asking him? He's... You know, what How are you, many what of you, you are you, there? You How him? many dwarves are left? Ah! Uh, we killed all the dwarves. Yes, yes. They are so delicious. They, they taste great. How many of you are there? Ah, too many for you to kill. You killed my friend, but ah, you'll 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 free me. Yes, yes, you'll free me. Uh, well, if there's so many of you, then I suppose you're disposable. Off the cliff you go. The <laughs> worst possible fate I can imagine. <laughs> I'm still holding him. I'm looking at you, uh, Salon. So you, you don't understand what he's saying. You just hear him. Gah, 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 gah. And this goblin's like shaking around. Gah, I'm kind of like growling. He's being resistant. and He's not answering questions. I'll, I'll say to uh, I'll say to you. I'll ask you directly. Like, does he want to die? Well, no, he doesn't. But he's not going to tell us anything. Time to slit his throat. I looked at you somewhat doubtfully, but since you're the only information I have about it, I slit his throat. And I <laughs> <laughs> there you he, He's dead. I start untying my rope. Oh, see, and now we have the rope fully intact. Good job. <laughs> yeah, if you'd just thrown him off, you would have lost the rope. <laughs> Well, you could have thrown him off with one shot, like holding onto the rope, and just. Although then you would have had to reel him up, and that's just a hassle. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. Though I guess at least the lawn has the strength for that. No one else does. Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. The tubs is still slightly 
catching up to me. Uh, but yeah, so now we have been introduced to uh, Falon's character when he has to uh, when he has a prisoner. Don't give Falon <laughs> prisoners. Yeah, I'm glaring at you, and I'm going to be like, did you get any useful information? To be fair, I don't think he was very useful. So that's a no. And I like stock off. I'm tell him to ask you for help with uh, addressing some of my wounds. Of course. I'm going to look at the lawn, give him that knowing nod, pat the back of his leg, and start helping the wounds. Like, that'll do. That'll do. Yeah, so go ahead and do your first aid here. Let's see. Just yeah. curious, when you pat the back of his leg, are you patting his thigh or like a calf? The back of or like, his or like back of the knee. Yeah, back where, of the where... knee. <laughs> oh, that's the broken one. That's the one that was bleeding out from. Oh, God. I gave it a heel. Look left, look right. So uh, first aid, how many times were you wounded there? Uh, Kara? Uh, twice. So here's the first aid. Hey, does it does it hurt when I do this? Oh, well, poking it. Yes. Yeah, you want you remember you want to roll average. So with. My spit is a good disinfectant. I mean, with a crit, with a hundred, that's I mean, spiraling off into critical Tom's failure. Actively but unlearning his oh, first God. aid. <laughs> but it, unfortunately, it doesn't it doesn't do anything bad when you fail it. So you don't give you don't heal her on the first wound. So the second one. I've never seen a cut like this before. I mean, you also have to figure out what Tubbs looks like right now. He is a man that almost died from falling damage. That's true. <laughs> is your turn? Maybe, maybe it's all the the like bruising, or not? Sorry, not your turn. You uh, you get one hit point back on the second wound. Um, maybe it's all the bruising from falling, and he's like his eyes are all swollen up. He can hardly see the wound as he's trying to stitch it or bandage it. Is anyone else hurt from that fight? Hey, Tom, how, how about me? You you? Can, can you help heal my wound? Oh, no, you're kind of small. Let me see. It's real. That so that was seventy five you needed to get under so that does not that does not heal your wound did you just have one yes. forced so it does yeah. not help well I got this wine skin here I'll just take another swig and I'll be good to go how about the law does he need a, a heal check yeah the lawn did you get oh, like a splinter or something. Uh, no, my hands are impeccable. No splinters. Just severely ugly. Please, uh, still so. <laughs> Damn, no your healing didn't cure that. <laughs> Maybe we can beat him. I don't know. Make him look better. I... Beat him attractive? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it'll come full circle. <laughs> the bruising makes you look better. No, uh, Ari is hurt, but at the same time, he's not going to ask the nearly dead tubs to expend any effort on him. And, uh, what would you guys like to do with the body, by the way, of the goblin? Kick it off the cliff? Yeah, I agree. That we can just toss. Or Yeet. stand it up well, as some sort of a yeah. scarecrow. Get it off before I even put in a second word. <laughs> can we can we search it first? Actually, I just want to see if any has any weapons on him. Anything useful? Yeah. Um. He doesn't have any other weapons on him aside from I mean his his short sword he left down there where where he fell. Um. Unless he was still holding the short sword the entire time. 
he you saw he did have a he still has a, a small shield strapped to his arm. And searching through his pockets, you find find 16 copper pieces in his he's got a little pouch on his side and he's got uh, several copper in it but aside from that uh, there's nothing else like crude leather armor uh, but it doesn't look very good and you know as you start looking through it you can it just smells and reeks of goblin I'm off the edge now So, uh, time to ask a question. Well, what did you see down there, and what do you think? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you go, Ari, Kara, and Horst? We saw four goblins, two of which ran off, and the other two we killed. Could have company soon. I feel like, undoubtedly, then they are retreating for additional assistance. If there are more of them, they will undoubtedly warn them, and perhaps yeah. bring them. They In are nocturnal, case. so if we spend too much...